Triple Two has become three in the OB1 podcast, made possible by Betwinner Studios, John, because it's taken us four podcasts, but we've finally got a live guest. Finally, finally. We've got a live guest. He's here. Old colleague. Yes. Uh, someone that I played with so, you know, for so many years uh, together at Chelsea. Uh, someone who has a, a strong opinion, you know, <laughs> about <laughs> and that little laugh on the pitch and off the pitch. Somebody who knows what he wants and does what he wants. It's the one and only. One and only, yeah. Florent Maluda. Florent, welcome to the Obi-Wan podcast. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm not the old colleague, I'm a colleague. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing old about you. <laughs> yeah, take out the old. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to, to, to join uh, the podcast and to support uh, you in this new adventure. I'm going to embarrass so John uh, straight off the bat because off air, you just told us that you're surprised that John has become the media <laughs> darling that he's become. You never envisaged this for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's true. Like, uh, but like many others, you know, it's uh, it's brave of him, and uh, yeah, Very because it's, <laughs> it's brave or stupid. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not questioning which. which. One? Yeah, we'll know. We will soon know. We will soon find out. But uh, yeah, it's not like uh, it was the more talkative uh, yeah, person with true. the media when we, when we were playing. And to 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 see him embrace uh, this kind of uh, of uh, media adventure, you know, it's uh, it's very interesting, and I'm happy to to support him. He has a very good opinion, especially when it comes to football. It's, like, it's very yeah, and I like it. It's very fresh. <laughs> you know your football, John. There's nothing uh, yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I do know my football. Uh, like you said, um, you know, it comes down to to you know from you know all the years that you know you've been in the game and also you know talking to people and also getting your opinion across over these years you, yeah. you 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 know you then come to a point whereby you know you actually do know a lot about your you know your football and uh yeah I do I do I, I do enjoy talking about football really I do enjoy expressing my feelings and you know talking about the game and, and how I feel about the game really. and John tells me you're exactly the same Florent yeah. you are the kind of guy if you know what you want you're gonna get it yeah yeah and I had to to get it <laughs> really because when you think about it most of the time people will tell you no don't do this don't do that so if you don't really go for it you would never get anything yeah so yeah, yeah. That's the story of, of our life. Yeah, no, I, I know. You, you know, he always had this strong opinion when uh, when we were playing. You know, Flo is somebody that if 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 this is what he wants, you, you can't you can't you can't change him from that. You know, if if, if he comes to training today and he's like, okay, I'm having a fight with you. <laughs> <laughs> it is you he's having a fight with. <laughs> he can't change. It's you. He's coming for you. <laughs> you know. This, there's been lots of times, few times, you know, where, you know, Flo has, I can count two, three people, you know, that Flo has, you know, he's has, gone after. Yeah, yeah, he's, gone after, he's come up to me as well. <laughs> me and him, me and him had, uh, you know, a, a crazy one once, you know, in training. Yeah, yeah, we did. We squared up to each other and then we had to get people to pull us out uh, away from each other. Yeah, it was, it was. I, th I think we we're playing Rondo. We we're playing Rondo, right, yeah. and, and then it happened, you know. Um, but yeah, we, it was just back then. Obviously, competition. Everybody, everybody's competing against yeah. each other. We want to, we want to be on the pitch. He wants to play. I want to play. Uh, you know, in training, we 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 give our all because that is where we determine who plays on the weekend. So Absolutely. Flo wants to play, I want to play competition and you know, it happens, it, it happens. And then, you know, we squared up with each other, a few blows here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Any black eyes? <laughs> no black eyes, no. <laughs> no, no, no. But it was funny, I, I remember it was, uh, I think with Carlo, yeah. it was with Carlo. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember yeah. Carlo looked the other way. <laughs> And after I came, he said, guys, shake hands and yeah. uh, it was done, but uh, yeah. So, for on, who was it? Was it you tackling John or was it John tackling you? Uh, Why did the fight start? No, no, the fight start, uh, I remember very well. It was in the Rondo. <laughs> See, I don't and, remember. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember very well because it's always something stupid. It's like you're in the middle. And you know, we always make silly passes. So yeah. the other guy is in trouble when he receives the yeah. ball. And then he did one and then, you know, had to go in the middle. And, and I said, John, 
uh, you're not going? He said, no, I'm not going. You have to go. <laughs> so I said, okay. <laughs> then I went in the middle and I said to the guy, give him the book. <laughs> 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 now you remember <laughs> so they give him the ball but I, I think it was Didier like he yeah. gave him the ball but he set him up set him with there. the slow ball so I had time to come <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so I went and I, with the sliding tackle and you're like yeah. you know he put yeah, so he, he pushed me and then we, <laughs> we, we started start, yeah. Yeah. and everybody jumped in and everything but and this was just the warm up of the <laughs> training <laughs> Yeah, that's a crazy yeah. thing. No, this is just a warm-up, yeah. It was just the warm-up. But, that's, but you've said it, JT has said it, Frank has said it. That was Chelsea. Yeah. That was the standards that you set in the warm-up on a Tuesday morning. Yeah, yeah, in a warm yeah, on a warm-up on a Tuesday morning. You know? That's just the standard we set because obviously the standard has to be high, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it was Rondo, we felt, okay, even if in Rondo, the manager still got eyes on what's happening. He can see, okay, who's sharp, who's who's touching the ball, like, yeah. you know, what's happening here. And in Rondo, it starts from Rondo, it starts from even from the warming up without the ball. The manager's got his eye looking at, okay, now we've lost the game on the weekend. Who am I going to bring into the team that's going to come and change the team or make the team play better? So you feel like if the team has lost on the weekend, it's your opportunity to show the manager, you know what, I'm ready. I want to be. I want to be in the next game. So it starts from Rondo. Everybody start flying with tackles. Uh, the standard is high, and that's that's just the standard for us back then. Winning has always been my driving force. Growing up, I dreamt of playing for the Nigerian national team. My passion led me there. The support and unity of players and Nigerian fans led us to the final. Together, we won the African Cup of Nations. The moments that will forever be carved in my heart. Join the winning team with Betwinner. You've spoken on this podcast, uh, Florent Jones talked about the standards when you walk into Chelsea. He felt that it took you a couple of years to really gain the respect of the senior guys, the JTs, the Lampards, the Czechs, the DDAs. When you the Maludas. The Maludas as well. You joined the club <laughs> in 07, yeah. 2007, coming off the back of great success with Lyon. We talked off air about Gangon yeah. as well and the success you had with DDA there. You walk into Chelsea Football Club, Florent, what's the first thing you realise? What's the first thing that hits you? Well, I would speak about uh, when I arrived. <laughs> first thing was, I think the preseason was in, in LA. Oh, and the first person I met was Gary Staker. <laughs> oh, Gary Staker. <laughs> and he came to the airport with the limousine. I was like, <laughs> what kind of preseason is that? You know, you, at the time it was with, with Mourinho. And, and I arrived, like, I went straight into training. And I was in the dressing room. And I remember, uh, maybe you will remember as well. I remember DJ coming inside the dressing room limping. Because uh, Tal Benaim just kissed oh, yeah. him. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm like preseason, like it's the first training, and those yeah. guys are killing each other. Like yeah. it was like, well, I say, oh, this guy is crazy. Like, <laughs> who is this guy? This new guy, like Tal, just sign, I think, from Bolton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tal Benaim. And, yeah, and Tal DJ Benaim was the man. Yeah. DJ was the man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm here in the dressing room and see DJ like <laughs> almost a guy, like a guy calling, from Bolton yeah. has come to break. <laughs> so to, I'm to like, get... whoa. <laughs> and like that, like you mentioned, that was the intensity of the training. I'm like, it's just a training session. Hmm. But this guy went all in on DJ, like try, almost trying yeah. to break his leg. Yeah. And DJ complaining, but he didn't stop. The next training, he came back to him. <laughs> like they, so. When I saw this, I'm like, okay, I look left, I look right, I see captain of England, captain of Ivory Coast. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. only captains in the dressing room. I'm like, okay, I better get ready. <laughs> yeah. You know, and outside of the of the of the pitch, it was very relaxed. You know, you're very yeah. relaxed. Yeah. yeah, you remember that preseason, like yeah. the guys yeah. they go to, to the mall yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in France or Italy, you are you're locked in the mountains yeah. or you don't <laughs> see the ball. Yeah. But like very relaxed. But 
Don't get it wrong. When you step on that pitch, oh, yeah. don't, don't be confused. It will yeah. be all in. So for me, that was the first impression about the, the, the standard that you mentioned. And um, I was just, I had this feeling I, I was ready. And about the standard, it was not so much the coach who was putting the pressure. The player themselves the players, were putting yeah. the pressure on themselves. I have to be the best. Why? Because I need to play for Chelsea. Then I need to compete in my own national team. Mm. So it was not like the, the, the coach just had to balance it a little bit, but the players were putting themselves uh, on about like under so much pressure. Mm. It was for me very inspiring because then you were improving. Like there was no limit. We were still improving. And year after year, because uh, at that time the, the, the rival was Man U. Man United, yeah. yeah. Man so, United, yeah. It's like we come. There's internal competition, but we never forget. We have we have to be better than those guys. And yeah. at the time was Ronaldo. Rooney. Ronaldo, yeah. So, yeah, Rooney, yeah. so I was like, okay, I have to learn, but I better learn quick. You remember, yeah, you were like yeah. next transfer window, you might be gone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's true. I, I don't have much time to prove. You know, whoever I think I was when I was in France, you mentioned best player of the league, like. Forget about what you did in yeah, the past. You have to yeah. prove all the time. Because, yeah. John, we've spoken on the podcast. Obviously, John had the option uh, of joining Manchester United. I'm a Man United fan, Florent. I keep telling him he should have joined Man United. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, yeah, he tried. He tried. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> I tried, yeah. He tried to be strong and into it. He eventually ended up at the bridge, and of course, he hasn't looked back. That summer of 07, there were other options available to you. Which other clubs... Did you have the option of joining? Uh, and why Chelsea after that? Liverpool. Liverpool was actually the, the first to really wow. show interest. Uh, my coach at the time was Gérard Roulier, who was like, uh, he's been at Liverpool okay, for a long yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. And uh, we were doing well in the Champions League. And when I heard that there was an interest, I talked to him, I went to his office. And it was funny because he, he loved so much Liverpool. Like he just made a phone call, I think, at the time to Rick Parry and say, "Are you interested?" They say yes, and he started to negotiate my contract with, <laughs> with Liverpool. Like, how much would you give? Okay, like he was the manager of he the, was the manager. <laughs> making the deal for Liverpool. So it was very, very, very close. Uh, second club was Real Madrid, and. Uh, if you remember, Aryan Robin was in Robin. Chelsea. Yes. Yeah. But I really wanted to come to Chelsea, you know, because I knew some of the guys with Michael Essien, yeah, Michael Lille, yeah. all those guys, and I was coming sometime to watch the game. So I was feeling close to Chelsea. And Chelsea so I, was a team that was coming up as well then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And why did I left Lyon? Because I wanted to win Champions League. And I had that, this feeling that Chelsea was the place where I could adjust and adapt to Premier League and at the same time compete to win uh, uh, the Champions League. And it took us a bit of time. But, uh, <laughs> a long <laughs> time. Uh, yeah, yeah. We lost the final in Moscow. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it was a uh, right choice. Uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's uh, had the opportunity with Liverpool, Madrid which are big names as well but i mean the the i was feeling that the the i was i would fit in into that chelsea team he talks yeah. about la john do you remember when he walked in for the first time yeah i think i could remember that yeah i could remember that i i i remember vividly the story that he just mentioned about <laughs> tal yeah about tal i mean <laughs> everybody was shocked everybody was shocked. and for tal it was nothing <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't touch it was, no, I didn't touch it because normally we have a guy we 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 know there's a, there's there's a, there's a guy who always kicks players and which is ricardo cavallo <laughs> ricardo cavallo will kick we kick you and be like oh no no sorry my friend sorry i touched and the then, ball yeah I, 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 I touch the ball. I touch the ball. He did not touch the ball. He just comes and smashes into you. And then all of a sudden, this guy comes from Bolton. And, and, and then we're thinking, you know, hold on a minute. This guy just starts smashing into people. And then when he's smashing to you, it's not like, you know, you, you say something and he apologizes. No, he just have a strong face. Like, you know, I'm here to play. I want to play. And I need to show... Okay, there's a different way to show it. But not uh, smashing into people and trying to get one of our best players injured. injured. 
uh, which was Didi, you know. And uh, I remember Didi walking in with eyes and so <laughs> upset, speaking <laughs> French and insulting Tom. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And we were so we just laughing. And, uh, and yeah, like guys, said, John and his green <laughs> salad. <laughs> the other one, you know, when you're upset and they put salt, Paper and everything on it, you know, on your wound. <laughs> so, so you, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's so you see me. them in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why in the yard? That used to be me and Salah. We, you know, we used to be the guys who, you know, who put a little bit of, uh, would throw a little bit of stones here and there and make sure, you know. Most of us. No, no, Salah, Solomon, Solomon Kalu, Kalu. Yeah, Solomon okay, Kalu fine. to make sure that, you know, the, the dressing room stays lively. The yeah. dressing room was very, very lively, you know. It, it, you, you st we stay in the dressing room sometimes. We don't want to leave. We don't want to go home. <laughs> Even when training finishes, remember, sometimes I come home. We stay on until about 4.30, 5 p.m. before we go home. We were just so relaxed. We play, uh, we play uh, um, darts. Darts. You know, we go in the dressing room, in the treatment room. We have banter. We go upstairs, have lunch, and then we start messing around in the, you know, in the shower, in the dressing room. It was so amazing. You know, everybody like, you know, people slapping each other with <laughs> towels, and you know, it was crazy. It was just the banter. We 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 became not just teammates. We became such amazing friends. It was like it was like family. Every day you're so happy to go back the next day to training. It, it was just absolutely amazing. I don't know what the dressing room looks like right now, but I'll say from our time, it was it, it, it was really special. Did you get that floor? Obviously, John and, and Solomon were good friends. Who was your friend at the club? Who were you close to? I was close to to Didier, obviously, to Michael Essien, Michael Essien because yeah. we, we played together as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's like... Uh, they they really helped me to to settle. Uh, Claude Makelele as well in yeah, the beginning, Claude, yeah, like it yeah. was the older brother trying to. <laughs> Everybody was trying to calm <laughs> someone down, yeah. but they were more crazy <laughs> than the other guys. <laughs> so so yeah, so yeah. those guys really helped me to to settle and really to they 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 share with me the codes of what happened before, what was there before, and also they made me feel like we need you to step up because we have competitors mm. who now uh, are getting better and they they were, were looking after me and to 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 talk about what you just said the atmosphere in the dressing room uh, i remember and now that i think about it is is i think is is very strange like even when you are upset yeah. I don't know if you remember, you will, you will still go to the message room <laughs> where everybody will wait for you to yeah, see yeah. what is your reaction. Like, is that like yeah, you're yeah. upset, something went wrong, and you just go away from the team? You no, still go you're back. You're always there. You you're still go there, back, yeah. and everybody's like, and you know, and this was very, very special. Like, uh, like I always say, we were a unit, even in disagreements, we were always getting back to the team to yeah. get along. You've played, both of you, different clubs, Nigeria, France for yeah. you. Yeah. Was Chelsea the most special of dressing rooms that you were involved in? I'll probably say so. I'll probably say yes. I think for me, you know, I had a great time also with the national team. The dressing room with the national team was really, really good, you know. Uh, but obviously, Chelsea was where I spent every day. It was, you know, for 11 and a half years, I was there every day. Um, so for me, it was it was a dressing room where I'll say I had the most fun, the most memories was 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 created there, and, and you know it is memories that I will never ever forget. Uh, you know, so many things went on there, <laughs> so many crazy things went on there. So uh, many trophies won. So many trophies won. So many, so many fights. So many, <laughs> so many managers. So many managers. I remember, I, you know, I can picture the, the, all the meetings we were having when the managers sat. And then they call us all in the, in the dressing room. So we have the meeting in the dressing room in the morning. If they've gotten the message that, you know, they're fired. So they come downstairs and then we'd have the meeting Who in delivers? the dressing room. Who delivers that message? The manager. The manager comes down in the dressing room and then we all have a meeting in the dressing room. And then he shake hands and says goodbye. says goodbye. So yeah, for me, obviously the most special one was Mourinho when Mourinho got yeah. sacked. You know, a lot like, of people 
were, were, you know, were in tears, were crying. It was very emotional because obviously he's just won yeah. the Premier League twice. You know, young manager, special this, one. This one was very shocking. Like, yeah, because yeah. you joined the club that summer. Yeah, that was his last signing. <laughs> Sorry, guys, <laughs> but you got him sacked. <laughs> It wasn't me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I remember in the, you know, uh, there was this movie in Fulham Broadway. You remember about success of Chelsea for two years, the trophies that yeah, you won, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, was yeah. this last night yeah. before they, yeah, they sack him. Yeah. I, I didn't that, yeah. even have te- uh, cable uh, TV yet in my... So I didn't know anything that was going on. <laughs> I arrived in training, <laughs> I see helicopters, the parazzi. I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't even know. That's it. the helicopter was, story. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. every time the helicopter is there, <laughs> you know, the manager is <laughs> gone. gone yeah. I'm like, what is this? It's like in a movie, like you come, <laughs> paparazzi, helicopters, and then you know, he, you know, it was very emotional. Yeah. Like people, oh, you see people crying. I'm like, so to be clear, you didn't have cable TV for, so you're skipping into training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the music and yeah. then you're right, you see helicopter. I'm like, oh, what is this? Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy, but still you have to train. Yeah, <laughs> still yeah, you have to yeah, train. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, it's crazy because. You know, we all do all that. We're all crying, emotional <laughs> and everything. And then he leaves and five minutes, we're all on the yeah. training <laughs> beach <laughs> and everybody's laughing and joking, <laughs> but not laughing as in laughing, as in joking. Yeah. You know, yeah, I know what you mean. Though. Life just get, we just yeah. move, move on with it. But then after training, okay, we start talking about it. But once we're on the pitch again, you know, it's like, okay, we have to get on with the job. We start training, we start... No, you know, we start... Focus on the game. Fo- fo- just the, focus on the next game. Focus on the next manager and, and and how do we get back to anyways? Because the reason why he's gone yeah. is because we were not winning. We were not playing well. And then that's where you see the likes of, <clears throat> obviously, JT uh, uh, steps up and, and uh, you know, try to push everyone and say, come on, guys, okay, we need to get better now. We need to pick it up from here. And and that's where we we get try to get back to winning ways again. And that's just what happened, you know, uh, with with our time at Chelsea. Manager gets sacked, <laughs> we, we bounce back, start winning again, and you know we just carry on from there. Come on then, be honest. Jose goes, yeah. you boys are talking, right? Who's gonna replace him? Yeah. I guarantee not one of you said, Ah, uh, from Grant. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I mean, we had the clue that maybe he yeah, was he yeah. was ready. Yeah, we had the clue. Yeah, yeah, because he was he was around then, yeah, right? He yeah, was he was around. around. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think we didn't know at the time if it was interim manager yeah. or until the end of the season. Yeah, that was yeah. more. But we knew that he was he was ready to take his Very position. different oh, from Jose. On. He was like, for me, sorry to say, but I never talk about manage, uh, people or, you know, managers, but he was, for me, I, I would say that. I would say, I think you also agree with me. I think for me, he just wasn't a manager. He was not a manager because yeah. he has no clue of what he's, he was doing. <laughs> he absolutely had no clue. He had yeah. a manager. He has somebody who does the training and who does the tactics. And all he does is just comes and tells us stories about Michael Jordan <laughs> and a fire that is somewhere burning somewhere. <laughs> absolutely. Brave no heart, clue. Brave heart. <laughs> You remember that Brave Art Brave movie Art before the Champions League final? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it yeah. worked for him. You know, he got us to the Champions League final. Yeah, but the, yeah, I agree with you. And I think he, he was smart enough to agree with you as well. Yeah. Why? You remember that training when he tried to lead the session and then he stopped the session <laughs> and the next, the next morning... Hank Tenkate was there yeah. because he realized that he didn't have that skill, so he had to find a guy who yeah. has that skill. skill yeah. So he was smart in that way in managing and finding yeah. someone to help him, to help him with yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, but I would say when you look at the result, we reached the Champions League final. Yeah, so true. you can learn from this as well. Uh, looking back now, I, I, I reflect that way. Yes, he knew it. And he, he knew what he needed at the time to help him mm-hmm. uh, to still, because, you know, managing chess is not easy. Even if your experience is yeah. like very, very hot seat. It so is, I is. think he did well, yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. you 
it's obvious you cannot say he was experienced for that kind of job, but he still did the job. Yeah. But I, I don't think he, he would be able to do it for a longer period. No. You know, for a yeah. second season, for example. Yeah. So we, we all agree on this. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was strange because he was always, um, uh, he's gone, you know. But we are. <laughs> you remember, most yeah. of the time was like this. Uh, guys, I know you know it's. Yeah. But, but uh, <laughs> you know, That's it. now is my time to shine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it was the same with the Roby Di Matteo with yeah. the be like, yeah. what I could be. Yeah. Yeah. We saw yeah. that yeah. so many times. You yeah. know, he's gone and everything. I'm very sad. He's my friend. But, but. <laughs> now I'm the man. You know, and yeah. you realize that you know is it's a way like. I see it's very violent, you know, there's some, some kind of violence when you're in that position, like yeah. people like look up to you and the next second, like, you're gone, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're gone, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, the seat, the Chelsea, being a Chelsea manager, it's, uh, you, know, it's, you know, it's very tough, it's very tough, it's a very tough um, seat to be in. Um, you, you get scrutinized uh, by the media, by you guys. By, by, you know, by the players, because you have a lot of international players who wants to play. Nobody wants to sit on the bench. No. Um, and imagine you trying to keep all those players happy. Yes. Yeah. Everybody has an ego. The ego was massive in the dressing room. Massive egos in the dressing room. And everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to be on that pitch come Saturday or, or Champions League game or whatever. We want to play. Um, Even people who play don't want to come off. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, you have players who have, who, you know, who've had one, two, three, four, five bad games, and they don't want to come off because they just want to be there, um, and, and they don't want to give anybody else's uh, opportunity to, to, you know, to play just because they're big names, and for them, I have to play because yeah. I am so 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 and so person. But then it, it takes a manager with, you know, with balls to come in and say, you know, listen, no, you're not playing right. Today, you're not playing. You see in, you see in this one out. So, so, so person is going to play. It takes, it, it takes a massive, uh, uh, you know, a manager with massive, big, big character to come in and, and do that in Chelsea. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you guys have said it. You played under so many different managers. For, for you, I mean, we've talked with John and we make the joke, Goose Heading was yeah. someone who loved John. Yeah. Who was the manager <laughs> that loved you? Uh, Carlo and actually Goose, Goose Hiddink was, yeah. I, I loved him as well. Like yeah, was You like, played did, a lot on the Goose as well. Yeah, and, a lot and the Carlo, yeah. you know, he didn't stay with us no, he didn't. so long, but the impact that he had with like simple advice, you know, he's, uh, he, he, bring back, uh, he brought back uh, confidence and uh, we won uh, the FA Cup, FA I Cup, think. Yeah. And I remember yeah, him yeah. dancing with us yeah, in the yeah, dressing room, yeah. like, oh, this is Gusendik uh, <laughs> <laughs> dancing with us. And, yeah. you know, that's the way he, he, he really was close to the players, but still he was not uh, carried away by his emotion. Mm. He, he, he had really, uh, it's like he was feeling us and he was able to support us by taking the right decisions. And like someone like uh, clear your mind because when you lose, uh, you know, the atmosphere is heavy in Nairobi, bring back that, you know, freshness mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. in training first yeah. because he had this method like bringing back uh, fun in, in training. In training yeah. Yeah. So the way we train gave us back our confidence, then he, he, he made the right choices because even though you want to play, you know that you know, maybe this guy is better than you. And at the time, he, he, he should play. So then yeah. he plays. And then when you are better, he will, you will yeah, have your you chance. Your but chance, you have yeah. to, to prepare yourself and you be ready. It, yeah. So this is like the dynamic that he brought back. And, you know, we finish, I think, at the best place we could at the time, based on the number of games that yeah. we had left. And to, to see someone coming from outside and have a straight impact, impact on yeah. us and then living. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. I live on the way and I'm good. You know? And then he's off again. Yeah, and yeah. then he's off, you know. Yeah. And, you know, we're not the same generation, you know, he's a big name. And I had the feeling he was a friend, you know. As yeah. a manager, yeah. you had this feeling, yeah. he was a friend. And for me, this is, uh, 
science of managing egos, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I always wonder why he didn't get the job longer. It was always it was in Trump. Russia. Yeah, I think one time he was in Russia. Yeah, he was in Russia. He came in for he a few came months. In for, for a few months, you know, st stabilized the <clears throat> the place, um, brought back, you know, the winning ways, the fun, the atmosphere. You know, it was relaxed, freshness around the place. Players enjoy coming back to yeah. coming to training again and enjoying what you know our job and what we do. And uh, he, you know, he used to come into the, you know, into the treatment room as well to have banter with the, with the treatment, with the physios, with the doctors, and it was just that atmosphere that really generates, you know, brings us back to 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 enjoying what we love to do and playing better as well. Yeah. And, and then we start winning games. It was just not. He wasn't doing anything special. It was just being able to man manage the plays, you know, bring back calmness. And then you know the rest is just history. Is he the is he the manager that gave you the most freedom at Chelsea? Because when I think of Chelsea, when we've talked about Josie, not yeah. much freedom no, there. Not much, no. Clear structure. Carlo, great man Carlo, manager yeah. that he was. But in terms of freedom to express the Dutch way, was that Goose? Yeah. Uh, Hoose. Sorry, I keep Hoose, saying yeah. Goose. Hoose. 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 Yeah. <laughs> was that Hoose? Did he give you that freedom? Uh, I think. Uh, in a short uh, period of time, yes, uh, especially in the way we were counter-attacking. Uh, it was very, he brought back the vertical passes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I would say Carlo uh, in uh, yeah, 2009, 2010. Yeah. Uh, first half of the season was the same, was working on the structure. Then mm. it allowed me to join Didier to uh, join uh, Nicolas and uh, and mm. Salah all the offensive players and to express more into assisting and scoring goals um so yeah that's that was the period where I scored most most of uh, the goals yeah and uh, and yeah but Hus I think set the foundation he gave me that confidence like you can help you know uh, balancing the team but still, you can join the, the attacks because, you know, when you have Didier and Lamps who score maybe 20 <laughs> yeah, yeah. goals a season, you know, is uh, you have to service those guys. They have to be happy first. Mm. And then what's left, you have to, you know, because when Didier score is two or three goals, then it, it might give you, you know. <laughs> well, you know oh, here you go. <laughs> yeah, now you can, yeah. I'm happy, you know, I'm the king, so now. <laughs> and, and, but you have to be ready. You have to yeah. be ready. Yeah. So that's the way it was. <laughs> I, I listen, and, and you know, John and I had Frank on episode two of this podcast, Florin, and, and we loved having him on. Quite a serious guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you had always said, John, very serious, quite yeah. quiet in the changing room, but a real serious guy. You know, Florin, I look at the players that you've played with in your career, Janinho at Lyon, Zinedine Zidane, for goodness yeah. sake, in France. <laughs> How good, and I ask this as a Frenchman, how good was Frank Lampard? I mean, it was uh, it was very different in a way that, like I said, is he was a midfielder that was scoring more than the, stri the strikers. Mm. So, in I think he developed something with his abilities, and he worked a lot in training on that, on the the timing yeah. arriving in the box and the shots outside of the box. And even though he was good, he was still looking to improve. I remember like the, the last year when he was, they were competing for free kicks. Yeah, yeah. One guy came with the free kick tending, you mentioned Juninho. Yeah. DJ starting doing the, those funny yeah. shots. <laughs> then Lamps look at him and then started, started to train him, like this. Yeah, yeah. And then you see free kicks flying from, <laughs> from halfway line and they're scoring. So, just to say that uh, observing him, he was very, very special in that way. How could the midfielder score? And you know he would score. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he you know score, he would yeah, score. Yeah, yeah, score. That's a crazy <laughs> thing But you can't stop yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you stop him one way, he will score another way. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, he was working on his physical ability to do the box-to-box, yeah. box, mm. but also he was studying the opponent's and was finding out the, the the loopholes, the spaces, yeah, 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 and and to to see it how like the process, like you see, is very serious. Not like someone who would talk and everything, but 
he observe and analyze yeah. and then implement something that you know he has a strategy and in terms also of leadership on the pitch i mean like the, the big games that we had mm -hmm. like there was situation like you give him the ball and no matter how many players in front of you <laughs> would just <laughs> shoot and score and and yeah. and you look those players frank and dj as well was like this in those special games where you know teams play tactically everything else, Did we do the extra they things find that spaces, yeah. yeah they find spaces yeah think, it's yeah. like they you know like in video games you have the yeah. regular yeah. Yeah. you know and yeah. then the they have the boost yeah they have the yeah. boost and and they reveal themselves under very very high pressure and the top players like Zidane uh, talking about Zidane for example that game everybody mentioned 2006 against Brazil was the same oh mm. okay. yeah. Yeah. like yeah. everybody would be maybe oh play. But scared, yeah. Relax, and you know he's like he disrespected Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, that's a great point. That that performance, it's yeah. gone down as one of the yeah. great yeah. individual performances. As a teammate, as the game's going on, Florent, right? Are you aware that Zizou is having an incredible game, or is it only after the match do you see it in the newspaper and think, oh, I want to no, watch that? Really, like you from, know, in the from the, the first touch when he received the ball. I think he was back to to their goal, so he he, he put his, his soul on on the ball, and then the guys tried to close on him because you know he, he knew yeah, he was yeah, the player, yeah. and then he he turned he, and he start doing those things, like you're like, you yeah. know, it's the beginning of <laughs> yeah. the game. You're looking for challenge yeah. and everything. I'm not gonna try this when the guys are like. Yeah, it's like it's like watching him. You know, it's like a ba watching like a, a ballerina play football. You know, he has this thing where he does his feet, like you yeah. know, he crosses the ball, and it's same way when you watch Roger Federer play tennis. Same way, yeah. and these guys they're just super super talented players. And, yeah. um, and 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 let's not forget, like you you know you're saying about Frank. I mean, we've talked about him so many times. The the the, the work ethic that he puts yeah. on in training. Uh, you know, we had an amazing chat with him. You know, you remember he always used to wear the yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the wet jacket and stuff. You know, and then he told us the reason why. You know. Uh, he's been wearing it and he loves wearing it. So uh, that was a very good insight because Absolutely. I thought he was just wearing it obviously because, you know, he's he's gone out, he's had a, a night out. But I mean, he started so even from you know, 14, since, yeah, 14 years old. He just conditioned yeah, himself. Just conditioned yeah. himself. And he made the most of his talent. And, pretty, and that's yeah, really give him a lot special. of credit. I pretty think those, those special players, they're obsessed with something and they, they turn it into a skill in football and then you get to see the the outcome but really like i say under under very very high pressure it's like they reveal themselves yeah. mm. and talk even like back to zida is like it will it will you know people are trying to kick you get yeah, you out yeah. of the game they manage in the final but <laughs> that, <laughs> the quarter final is like it wants to take your confidence away from you Like you won't come to me, yeah. okay, no problem, yeah. come. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now we do you something that next time you don't want to come. You will not come, yeah. Messi yeah. is like this as well. Yeah. Everybody wants to kick him. And then you go and then he come at you, he come at you, he come at you. <laughs> like, no, I cannot like, yeah. there will be too many highlights of me on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, and speaking of one highlight, you've mentioned it, Zizou, that quarterfinal performance against Brazil, hands down one of the best yeah, individual special, performances. Man. But of course, we all know what happened in the final. He scores the Penenka yeah. against yeah. Gigi Buffon. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets red carded for a headbutt on Marco Materazzi. There'll be a lot of people listening to this podcast, a lot of people watching this podcast, Florent, wanting to know, did he apologize at full time? Did he apologize to the players? Yeah, I think uh, uh, at the end of the game, it was very quiet, in, <laughs> of course. Of course, and, uh, lost and, a World uh, Cup. Yeah, he apologized, but on the moment, I didn't understand why, you know, because remember at the time there was no VAR. Yeah. So when we when we played there was a red card i thought it was unjust you know so when he apologized i'm like why you know and then after i <laughs> understood why but the time was like why is he apologizing i was like oh maybe he's the referee you know it's like well, you lost so yeah. it's yeah. finished but yeah. why yeah. apologizing and then 
there were so many people coming in the dressing room, the French president and everything. So like, it doesn't matter. And then you start people talking, oh, what happened? Why did he do that? Uh, you know, and uh, what did he say to him? I don't know. I, I didn't even know that yeah. he had bought uh, Materazzi. And then when you see the image, yeah, if, you know, he, he was, uh, the referee was right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, 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 I mean, obviously, yeah, I think when you had, but, yeah. you've got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, it's, it's an no opening, debate. I mean, there's no debate about that, but now nah, he, he had an amazing, amazing uh, oh. tournament that, uh, and, and, and I, I think without that um, <clears throat> incident, I think, obviously, France won it, France, yeah. yeah, definitely, France would have won it, definitely. Yeah, and people have to remember, uh, it was, it came out of retirement, to help France qualify for this World Cup. So in my mind, I'm like, why is he apologizing? Without you, I wouldn't even be at the World Cup. You wouldn't be at the World Cup. Yeah, we were struggling so bad, like, to be honest. Like, we came back with uh, Makelele, with Turan, with Bates, yeah, because we were struggling right. to qualify. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, why is he, you know, you are Zidane, I'm fine, you know? <laughs> and then you had people from the house, I say, why did he do that to you and this? Like he stole the, you know, without him, you would win the, I'm like, without him, I would watch <laughs> the World Cup on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, this is my reality. That's the way I see it. Like without him, yeah. I would I would watch this World Cup on TV. So, yeah, yeah. so no, I'm still grateful, you know, it's, uh, I never expected actually to to play along Zidane in national team. And uh, that was a very great experience, eye-opening experience, because I get to to train beside him. And you know, like when you train with someone, you're looking at him, yeah, what is yeah. he doing? You know, <laughs> yeah. what is, is there something special yeah. that he's doing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and you realize that even like geniuses like him, they are very disciplined very, very disciplined mm. with everything. And when you see someone as talented, as gifted as him do that, you're like, I cannot afford to be, <laughs> you know, to, to, to and neglect. He was, he was dedicated for yeah. yeah, yeah, and discipline every time, breakfast, same time, you know, the way he eats. And so he was not, um, oh, I am gifted and, you know, I'm just yeah. better. And yeah. you, you don't feel that ego uh problem with players with like like him you know and and for me i i it was very eye opening because it's like the more i give the more i receive and with him was that was the lesson i've been taught is the more you give the more you receive mm. so mm. every time i was running i give him the ball give him, i think <laughs> did that give me the ball back you know i'm like it was just happiness to see someone like this take you in consideration in the way he plays you yeah like you make a run it gives you the pass it's mm. easy for mm. him it's easy you don't even have to uh because you know when you're young you make a run, you want... You don't get the ball, yeah. yeah. From, give yeah, me the, yeah you have yeah, to give me the, the ball because players, yeah. I made a run. Yeah. But with him, it was like, I learned, I make the run, I don't even have to look at him. The ball you will come. You know the ball is coming, So yeah. then I'm looking at the goal kicker, goalkeeper, I'm looking at other things because I am confident the ball will come will in come, the right yeah. timing. So I'm like, you know, taking bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I've never asked you this. Who was the best passer of a football at Chelsea? Oh, best you played passer with? of a football. <clears throat> Ooh. Was Deco? Yeah, I had the, Deco. I have Deco in Deco. mind. Yeah, Deco. The touch. Yeah, Deco was good to touch. He was the touch the way he receives the ball. You know, he never controls the ball with inside step. He always puts his um, his uh, so starts on the ball. He never controls with with the inside. Really, he never. Always he starts on top of the ball. And, and it's just special because he just the ball comes, boom, and he once the ball once the, the you know his foot is on the ball, he can move it wherever he wants. Yeah. He can just push it this way, push it that way, or just he can dribble a player just with his feet on the ball. I mean, it was special to watch Deco play. Deco was another player that you know when you know when he came, when he came to the team. He wanted to smash him. He's playing in your yeah, position. Yeah, yeah. no, no, of, 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 no, of course. But you know, he was Deco. He was coming from Barcelona, yeah. and, and and you know, 
he 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 has to play. He wants yeah. to play. He, he had the relaxed way to play. Yeah, yeah. Was, because yeah. Premier League is very. You have to be careful. Don't miss your first touch. Oh yeah. He was also <laughs> one that every morning, you know. Oh my God, you don't want to. You don't want to walk past Deco next to next to Deco. Oh my God, he is drained. Stinks of booze. <laughs> Every morning, Deco. It's Brazilian, isn't it? Every morning, it's like sometimes we're like, Deco, please don't walk close to the manager. Just go that way. Just, just go that way. That's why I love this podcast, man. <laughs> it's all the secrets. It's all the yeah. secrets, Deco. You don't get the smell on TV. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> was he the best passer for you in that team? Yeah, there was a, you mentioned Deco, but Deco. I think it was not specific to our team. That's because it's Deco. Yeah. Uh, I think the there was like some link up, link up play. For example, I think about the link up play between Lamps and uh, Ashley. Oh, he yeah. would find Ashley in a pocket. Yeah. Yeah, you know they had a, they had an yeah, it's chemistry, like, both of them. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, and without even looking. looking. Yeah. So when mentioning about passing, it was not only about the the, the ability of of the player. It's about if I want to give you the ball, yeah. I will yeah. give you anywhere on the pitch. Yeah. If I don't want to give you the ball, yeah. <laughs> even if you're close <laughs> to me, you will you will not get it. So that's why <laughs> yeah. I also had to. To learn as well how to create a bond with the player because yeah. with this quality, you know, you know, some of the strikers yeah. they sign and they would never touch the ball <laughs> and they were like, "What's wrong with me?" <laughs> you know, it's no, yeah. you have to, you know, make sure you accept it and then you could see that they had the ability with both feet. Yeah. You know? yeah. Remember, even JT, deep, yeah, JT was also a good yeah. passer. JT, yeah. 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 yeah, with switch the left and the right switch yeah. of play. He can also ping balls, you know. I mean, he, he was also someone who's uh, good, you know, very good passer. I'm noticing you're not seeing yourself, John. No, listen, I was, I five was, yards. yeah, when it comes to that five yard short passes, yeah, I probably say, okay, but when it comes to obviously the long passes, you know, you have to give it to JT. JT was a guy you can ping it yeah, from left to right, from left to right. I um, I think it was you were um, an, a good addition because you had your range, and it's like for long passes, would you, you would have JT lamps. Yeah. Uh, sometimes DJ would drop and <laughs> try something. <laughs> You're like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> you like, go there, go like, there. What's wrong with go there, go there. But he wanted he to, wants show, to show. I have this as well. <laughs> So you would see you had. Let me it, teach you guys. Yeah, how it's yeah. <laughs> you're like you guys having fun. Let yeah, me show let you me that show I you. can do it as well. <laughs> so y you would see that we were very disciplined in, in in that way, and you were that holding midfielder where you would secure the ball. Yeah, you yeah. know, play in yeah. a short range. You were able to switch the play switch, as well. Yeah. Yeah. But you had some players. They like to take risk. Yeah. Like you remember, <laughs> like you're running, trying to get the and the guy he just have an inspiration. He wants to try the most difficult <laughs> pass, pass, and then yeah. they are like, "Wow, you know, it's what yeah. more about that feeling." Yeah, everybody noticed. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, but the the ability, like the the talent was there, and the ability, the quality was there, but. Mm. Uh, sometimes mm. I was like, why did he do? <laughs> why yeah. did he do that? Like, yeah. but uh, yeah. So to mention the one player in particular that was above the, I think they all had this ability to make differences, and they knew how to to do it at the right time. Well, I need to apologize to you here, Florent, because I'm going to bring up some bad memories. It's just dawned on me. <laughs> France World Cup final 2006. Yeah. Zinedine Zidane red card you lose on penalties. Two years later, Moscow. Yeah. 1-1. One, one, another good friend of yours, Didier Drogba, sent off. Yeah. I hate to tell you this, despite the fact I'm a Man United fan, <laughs> you lost on penalties again. Can I ask, and I know it's a difficult question, what hurt more, losing the World Cup final in the manner that you did or the Champions League final? I think both are very similar. It's like you... I wouldn't even add when we lost to Barcelona at home. It's the same feeling. 2009. Yeah, it's the yeah. same feeling. It, it, you feel like time stops. 
it hurts, but there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know that next season you have to start over. And for example, the World Cup is totally different because it's every four years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know if in four years you will be qualified. Be so yeah. it might be your last World Cup. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. you need to find something to distract your mind from this thought that, and especially, you know, the World Cup, when you walk past the World Cup, oh. the trophy is shining like, maybe that's the last time I see that trophy. <laughs> and that was actually the last time I saw the trophy. <laughs> Champions League was different. For me, it was the, the first time and, you know, you think about the game and everything. The scenario was the same because we lost on penalties. We thought we would win and we were ready, you know, when yeah. uh, when Jetty slipped. Yeah. It was like, yeah. that was the, we had the opportunity to win it and then you, and then you sit. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was close to, to, to Claude. I was like, sit and close it. Oh, it's finished. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> And you know, it's like, you know, you, you feel your heart is something <laughs> in your chest, is what yeah. you don't show, but it, it hurt inside. And I think you never really recover from that. For example, I never watched those games back. You never yeah, have. Me never. Too. I never. I never. Pe did. People I talk never to did. me about this. I have memories. I never did. It's like, like I said, time stops. So in my, I think blood says everything is there. Yeah. But I never look back or analyze the game. It's over. The opportunity is Done. finished. In history, you remember who won. You yeah. don't remember yeah. against who you played and everything. And so you realize I was the one against, like I, I was in the losing team. The, no one will remember that. Even if you had a good season, no one cares, yeah, you know, no yeah, one cares. Yeah. It doesn't matter, like us in 2012, no one cares how we won, we yeah. won. That's yeah. it. Exactly, it and matter. you know, it's, uh, you know, in high level is, uh, uh, it's either you win, either you lose, and people don't care about the losers, so. Yeah. It's repetition as well, it's repetition. It's like, how long are you gonna keep doing this? You know, when we were there, I think now when you pack up and you're done, you finish playing, you start to, to think about, it start to come to you because you start to see things in a different way. Because I never thought, I never looked at things differently. I was just, okay, the season is over, next mm -hmm. season. The season is over, next season. And I get, we get a month off and then we're back again. Yeah. We do the same thing over and over and over again. And it never came to me to be like, you know, it's... It's, it's Chelsea. You just thought it would always... Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it, it became for us, it became normal that yeah. we have to always win a trophy. We always had to win something. You know, now I look at other clubs, you know, it, you know, okay, they don't win this year. It's a little bit okay. Or they don't yeah. win next year. So yeah. For us, it's... It's not acceptable. It wasn't acceptable. We had to win a trophy. It's not, it doesn't matter what trophy it was. We had to win a trophy every single year. Every manager that's come in. At least, at least one. Trophy. At least one trophy. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it was just the standard that was. You look at Chelsea now, you look at Man United now. All I hear is top four. Top yeah. four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No trophies, top yeah, yeah, four. Yeah, exactly. Like, we, we were not thinking about top four. Like I told you, it's, it, it's like winning. there is, there are some keywords just to, so it becomes acceptable, you know, is, uh, I, I heard some Man United legends speak about that, like the, you know, you cannot accept this, you know, to be in the top four or, or yeah. top six now. They say yeah. top six. <laughs> now, you know, they were almost top, now it's top, top 12. Now yeah, like, it's top six. Yeah. Steve, Steve off relegation. Yeah. Yeah. We are Ex top yeah. six. We're happy. <laughs> e exactly. And, and for me, it's, uh, it's kind of strange because you don't want to be talking about history. You want to be uh, talking about I support the team. Normally, to get into that team, you must have this mentality where you are the best. And when yeah. I speak about the best, uh, you know, the likes of Cantona, the likes of uh, Rooney, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. Beckham, you know, like the best players in England wanted to play for Manu. It's not like I want to sign for Manu and be in the top four. Yeah, You know, this yeah. is kind of strange yeah. to hear. And yeah. same for, for, for Chelsea. 
uh, when uh, Abramovich uh, bought the club, he had a clear ambition. Is to n n he was not talking about no. winning the Premier League. He was talking about winning the Champions League, and yeah. everybody yeah. was, you know, um, believing in that vision. And every player who joined Chelsea, no matter what you did before, because I even remember when Balak signed, you know, was you know, coming from yeah. Chef yeah. You know, they did great things before, but you were you are supposed to do it here, you know? Yeah. So this is what is strange sometimes when you hear people, it's like they're ready, they they already have an excuse. We were not trying to win. We were trying to be in the top four. You know, of course, there is competition there, but, you know, good teams, Madrid and whatever. But if you're not training to beat them, you know, I'm not even talking how. is like you say, me, that's the way I think. Yeah. If I have to, to play against Brazil, I am a big Brazil fan. But when I played against Brazil, I don't care who you are. Yeah, yeah. you want you to know, win, yeah. I don't yeah. care. You yeah. know, I, I don't want to feel sorry after the game. This feeling and getting back to those finals, when you have, when you have this experience, you don't want to experience it again. You know, so this is how you use something negative into preparing for next time, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. You will be sorry. I will not be sorry. I will celebrate. <laughs> uh, it's amazing listening to you, Florent, and listening to John, and we've had JT, and, and we've had Frank, we've had Victor Osimé as well on episode three. Yeah. Uh, I'm amazed. Take Victor out of it for, for a spell. He's still in his career. He's still a young man. Yeah. But I listen to you two. I listen to JT. I listen to Frank. You boys are born winners. I can see it. The way that Florence talking there, mm -hmm. the way that you are talking, John, the way that the other two have as well. What about players that have come to the club and perhaps haven't quite had that? And there's a player that comes to mind, and, and maybe I'm being unfair, and that's where you can help me mm -hmm. out. Nicholas and Elka. What was Nicholas like? Was he someone? I listen to you guys, and I think winning. You had to win. It was the be all and end all. Yeah. Was that the case <laughs> with Nicholas? Uh, be honest. He knows Nick way, way more. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I'll just say quickly what I think about. It. For me, you know, Nico was a Nico. Nico was a strange character, isn't it? Nico was somebody you know. Is Nico was always quiet. Uh, he doesn't speak much. You know, he was always a guy. You know, he comes in the dressing room. He changes. He sits. He sits on his locker. He doesn't really go to the treatment room. He doesn't go upstairs to have uh, breakfast. So he's just in the in the dressing room uh, on his phone. He doesn't speak much, but I mean, he's just a lovely guy. When you get to speak to him, when you get to know him, he's just an amazing human being. Um, quiet, quiet, very quiet. But then also in training, he he, he doesn't he, he trains, but he gives you. But enough. Enough. Not like a hundred percent. Nico gives you enough, but it depends on when. You know, yeah. he comes in. Sometimes he comes in uh, into training, and he trains really well. But most time he comes in, he, he gives you a little bit, but not too much. Uh, but in the game, you know, he's on it. In the game, he switches on. You know, he's just like you know, and then he does his thing. He's called goals. Um, another guy like Flo, very very direct with what he wants. What he wants to do is what he's going to do. You can't change his mind. I think for me, Nico is probably one of the, probably couple with Flo, the, probably the two most stubborn players. Really? That I've, yeah, Nico was very stubborn. Nico's, Nico, yeah, you, you I, can't change. Am I, I being unfair there? Do you know what I'm meaning about, uh, I see, I, see I, I hear winners in you guys, the mentality. Did he have it? Yeah, I would say that if he, because, you know, I was inspired by, by Nicholas as in story. When you look at his story from a very young age, it was very advanced. Yeah. He played with all the players. The top players, yeah. Even in Paris at the yeah. time, he was like 16, he started. Then he joined Arsenal, then he went to Madrid. And he had, like me, he had to face adversity. So that's also one of the reasons I don't go to Madrid because of his story there. Like okay. they never made his life easy. No. Easy for him, yeah. But yeah. remember what he did at Madrid. He, won the he was League. isolated. It's not like they were giving him the ball. He had to create the situations from yeah. he, for himself. They won the Champions League and look how they treated him. So I think he developed a way to protect him, himself from that. Right. His, his 
confident. He knows what he can do. But you you know, he, he really adjusts to the environment. But when it comes to deliver, like he's fearless. Oh yes, he's yes. fearless. Yeah, like yeah. He, he, you know, he, I mentioned Messi. Oh. You know, I, I saw players like this, very talented. They will make you regret. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, they will make Nick, you regret. Yeah, it will come at those, you yeah, yeah. and it will make everybody feel you the weakness on you, of your team. It yeah. will come at you, come at you and there's nothing you can do. So I don't think like in a system, if you don't know how to, and I think even socially, if you don't know how to connect with you, it doesn't open the door for you. No, no. And that was difficult for many people. Like you say, when you yeah. know him, it's totally different. Yeah, totally different. But yeah. before yeah. you get that access, Ooh, you know, it's, it's tough. you have to prove. And, yeah, and you were close tough. to him for long. Yeah, close because I am French, close because I, I respect him a lot. Like I say, when I started, when I arrived, I was 15 when I arrived in France. And I was coming from French Guyana and... You know, in French Guyana, I think it's like Africa. When you are good, they make you play with adults mm -hmm. directly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I arrived yeah. in in uh, in Europe, they, they made me play with people of my age. I was frustrated. <laughs> and the first example, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, really? Wait, like, you, you know me. After six months, I said, I'm going back. I don't want to stay. Yeah. They make me play with babies. <laughs> they were not babies. They were my age. But I was not used to that. I said, I came, you know, in in the winter, I came here and... I want to have the reward. I want to play with the first team. With the yeah. top guys. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. the prof I was 16, yeah. 15, 16. I want to play with the professional guys. You know, in Europe, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not like this. Yeah. You have steps. So, and the first example of young players who break into the first team, and it was Paris at the time, was Nicolas Anelka. Because Thierry Henry, Trezeguet, you know, they were playing a little bit, but he went into yeah. the team, he never straight, left. Straight, yeah. You know, straight, yeah. straight into French yeah. national team. Yeah. And so with Zidane, Jog all those guys yeah. who, who, who won in 1998, he was led, left out of that squad of yeah. 1998, remember? Yeah, yeah. A little bit like Benzema, this is because of his character. He didn't have character problem, people judge him by his attitude because he, did, he doesn't speak. speak yeah. yeah. That's you understand? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's so true. you are young, you that's make the true. team win, they leave you out of the of the squad because someone thinks that your attitude <laughs> yeah. doesn't match what you should do. So I really identify myself to him. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it, Playing with him now, I was like, like Zidane, I never thought I would play with Anelka, mm. you know? And when I played with him, you know, I remember those times. So, yeah, I want to, you know, I am a midfielder. I have yeah. to feed those yeah. guys. Yeah. And I was very happy to, to see him, him happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when he was scoring. Yeah, he, was he, he was special. He was a special player. A special he player. Was, yeah. He was, I yeah. remember it. Special it's, player. It's insane for you to remind me, 1998. Yeah. He was coming off winning the double with Arsenal. Exactly. They left him out of he the squad. He was a young boy. Yeah. He was Henri before Henri was yeah. even on yes, the scene. Yes, exactly. What yeah. a player yeah. he was. Yeah, exactly. He was Henri yeah. before Henri. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. he was champion very early with like the best teams. Uh, you know, he, when he left uh, Paris, is maybe he, he played six months, then he went to Arsenal. When he came to Arsenal, he was top scorer. Yeah. You know, so he had this champion mentality. Like, I might be the youngest, but I will make the team win. Yeah. He went to Madrid. You make the team win. The whole city is against you. <laughs> you know, it's very people forget that part. Like, yeah. what can I do to be accepted? Everything I do is wrong. So why would I try? Mm -hmm. So when you have this background, then you understand things. But mm -hmm. when it comes to football, the football language is very easy to play. Oh, did, did you yeah. console him in two thousand and eight after he missed? Because we were talking no, about not, it. Not, not really. It's like. Uh, like I say, I don't care. I lost. You know? <laughs> that was Nico. That was yeah. Nico's. That was Nico's attitude. Yeah. Uh, Nico will, will, would be uh, shrug of the shoulders. Yeah, just whatever. Yeah, just yeah, just whatever. <laughs> we lost. He doesn't. He doesn't. But it's not like he doesn't care. I think during when um, uh, Carlo came. Remember when Carlo came? Was it Carlo or or uh, the Brazilian manager? Scolari. Who is, who is Scolari. He started playing Anelka <laughs> instead of Drogba. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that was when we saw Anelka. Anelka yeah. it was became top a, scorer. It was top scorer. Yeah, he had 16 goals because he, maybe because, in October. Yes, or because November. people were like, "Why is Drogba not? Play, Drogba should be playing." So Anelka wanted to prove that you know what? You don't need. I'll Drogba. get you goals. You don't need Drogba. And he was like you said, he was the top scorer. Yeah, he was playing. There was well. also one thing is Didier was playing central. Strike as a strike, yeah, and yeah. They, they were always asking Nico play there to play on the left, yeah. on the right. Yeah. And when Didier, I think, was was injured or away, or he had malaria, I remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that was the first time. Oh, we have Nico, you should you <laughs> can now play in, the in your position, yeah. You know? And then he showed that okay, in my position now, you will get to what you could get two yeah. years ago yeah. when I joined, yeah. but yeah. you're just yeah. waiting for everybody to be out. To you just me, think yeah. about, oh, this is my position. And naturally, he had things that he, I think he was doing in Arsenal. The way he was scoring, oh, yeah, he, yeah. it made it goals, look easy. Yeah, easy. Yeah. It made easy. it look and easy. And we played, I mean, dark, because because he wasn't there, he could come in, get the ball. Yeah. And, and, and so the we didn't have like a, we had the freedom. We didn't yeah. have like a structured number nine, like a drug that we give us, uh, you know. And then there were trouble when DJ came back and then the yeah. manager doesn't know how yeah. to announce. Yeah. You have to be a little bit on the left, a little <laughs> bit on the right. And like, <laughs> So yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's I think the pro the, the manager's problem when everybody's fit have this character yeah. and then you have to compose. You know, you have to yeah. ask, please, can you service this guy? And then the ego mm -hmm. comes in. But when you talk about the quality and the ability to be a match winner, they all had it. Mm. And, and, and that kind of leads on nicely because Nicholas and Elka was at the center. You talked about 2006. You walked past that World Cup thinking, this might be the last chance I play in a World Cup. You got to a World Cup four I years later. I never walked past it. You never did. <laughs> I was going to knock that in the uh, stage. Oh, oh, no, yeah, no, no, you were. You had more holidays. That's a good point. <laughs> And, uh, uh, I, never to, I think all the Scotland boys had plenty of holidays as well at a World <laughs> Cup. But you got to 2010 and Nicholas Anelka is again at the centre yeah. of a story that I think we've heard little bits of exactly what happened. From your opinion and your standpoint, Florent, what happened in South Africa no, in 2010? I, I even before, uh, I would say again, we were struggling to qualify. <laughs> there was the handball from Nigeria. Yeah, Remember, yes. like from this, everything was wrong. Like, it's like uh, uh, self-sabotage. And I don't know what's wrong at the time with the, the French national team, but mm. it's like you have the best talent. You have a very good team and you self-sabotage. You. you know, it's... Yeah, there's it's, a little bit of a bad, bad, bad chemistry there, yeah, I and think. Yeah, like between, between yourself. It was I really think. a pity because everybody had this in mind. This could be our last World Cup. Yeah. Henry, well, I think it was his fourth or fifth World Cup. Anelka, like everybody was performing well in the club. So... We knew, you know, there was a strange atmosphere with the manager, you know, a lot of people, including me, we didn't like him. Mm. But we were like, it, Why? Doesn't, it what, doesn't matter. What was he like? Aloof? It, it was kind of fake, you know, he was trying to, you know, those managers trying to, to get into psychology, they're trying to get into your head, <laughs> into but your they head, don't have yeah. your level, Yeah. you know? And I remember at the time we had this conversation, we were like, in Chelsea, we see all type of managers. They come, they visit, and they were welcome. He's the only one who never... It was really arrogant. He was like, he would come to London, visit people in the house, but not come to the training ground, which is weird. So right. he okay. was trying to program people. When you know at this level, we are not stupid. Yeah. So at one time, people start to talk, and there was a bad chemistry because we're like, we understand what he was trying to do, but we were like, if we focus on the football... We have a very good team. Mm. And at the time, the guys, you know, we had a couple of meetings. We're like, guys, let's put the ego on the side. This is the World Cup, South Africa. You know how special it is for us. Yeah. Like, yeah. So there was, everybody put their ego on the side, but there was those personal issues with the manager. And with, with Nicolas, I never saw him have a, a bad attitude, you know, something, like I say, he... And I f he, he revealed it, I think, afterwards. He said, the manager came to me to my house in London and I told him, 
this is all I play in chess. You just look. Yeah. So yeah. if you call me, that's the way I play. You cannot try to guess <laughs> and, you know, this. Or you pick someone else. Who's going to play the way yeah, you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I yeah. think this is where things went wrong between them. And when, you know, with the competition, the pressure, you're not performing well. Prestige, you know, is the second game is uh, very tense. And mm -hmm. then I think the manager lost it and he tried to use Nicolas as, the you know. The scapegoat. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. because of you, you know, it's because of you, you know, we will go out. So it's, it's you because you don't stay in your position. You don't stay number nine. And, but we were not playing well. So you know, Nicholas, if you, he's trying to come and touch the ball. It's yeah, not a big deal. Yeah, yeah, and now yeah. after time, like things went off, but again, this is not a reason to treat someone like this, especially knowing, you know, his history and what happened. Yeah. So you, you, it's not like someone who will try to fight. He said, okay, do what you want. Yeah, you know, Nicholas, yeah, he said, yeah. okay, if you think you're smart, yeah, just do it. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like he will argue with you, but, I think it was too much what they did, like ban him from the World Cup yeah. and this and that. Why? You know, if you lose a game, why? And sometimes people under pressure react in a weird way and they try to bring the media against you and the country. You have a whole country against you, you know, <laughs> for what? For a football game that you lost or whatever. And as a manager, you shouldn't be the one trying to direct people at one specific player because you want to get away from your responsibilities. Mm. You yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's true, it's true. So that's the way I saw it. Personally, I didn't like the manager, but for me, I was focused on the competition. You know, I don't yeah. care. You like me, you don't like me. And most of the players, for example, when they were a problem, they were like, listen, in our clubs, we have problems like this every day. Yeah. And they know how to manage it. Yeah. You know, remember you, you, you had the interview with JT when there was this problem with the national team. They they, they took the, the armband from him and you remember from yeah, the yeah. helicopter following him <laughs> from the training ground to the English uh, because he yeah, was... Uh, yeah, so yeah. things like this happen, you know, at the, but you have to be able to manage it, like you say, to calm things down yeah. and to bring back the focus on the actual game and if yeah. you win people forget about yeah, this true true i think it's uh, obviously it's something that is obviously we've talked about it i mean we your 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 beloved club i mean manchester united the, the problems that they're having yeah uh, the managers just i mean throwing everyone under the bus that's it yeah you said it we talked about jade and I said it yeah first, you know against, you know it's the you wrong know, thing Jayden, to do yeah and and then again now he's done it again with 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 russia hasn't yeah he? i mean okay he's gone out um the birthday party is probably been planned for, for... Yeah, that I also get. I mean, you, you don't go out after losing a 3-0 against your biggest, biggest rival, your neighbours. Um, but it's then, a bit naughty. Yeah, it's a bit naughty, that. But, I mean, okay, when you look at it, okay, the, the, the party has been planned. It, it's his birthday. You don't change the day, the day you're born. Uh, are you going to say, okay, should I, should I postpone it? But yeah. then you're looking at the Manchester United team. When are they going to win again? <laughs> <laughs> he could have postponed it to this past time. That's when he oh, no, no, we lost again. Oh, no, no, it's postponed. Oh, we lost again. And all of a sudden, he's 42 and he's retired. And he's finally he having a yeah, No, it's true, but I think what's wrong is when you have this feeling, it becomes personal. Yeah. You understand? I think we had the example where the manager had an argument with the player, but then the two come together when it comes to the game. They yeah. put their difference aside the side, yeah. for the game. And yeah. then the game goes well, then you forget that you had an argument. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. life of a dressing room, that life in big clubs, you know, you have some clashes. And then, you know, during the game, you fix it. Of course. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. for example, a striker, people boo him, he will score and people will yeah. praise him. Yeah, you know, it. that's the story of football and that's what we like about football. So I think as a manager, you cannot, especially now with, you know, social media and everything, the influence of, you know, the, the now the content is, everything is, you mm. cannot have a birthday party and no one knows about it. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. will be live <laughs> streamed. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you have to understand that the environment changed and as a manager you have to be able to deal with it 
You cannot say, oh, you will not go out or this and that. You have to teach, use that to teach yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. But I've, keep people yeah. out of the squad and, and this and that. This is not the solution. And then did, did Patrice get in a fight with a doctor? There was reports that... Ah, no, no. What I think it was, uh, you know, when there was this story with the boss, it was not the doctor, it was the fitness coach. Fitness it was, coach. It was our fitness coach. Um, Robert uh, Duverne. Yeah, uh, that we had in Lyon. But... It was not fighting the, the fitness coach. And that's why you see the angle, the prospect is very important, is, you know, the fitness coach was losing it because of the pressure. And it was like, oh, you cannot do this. And uh, like, uh, you know, uh, I really believe in this World Cup. And I, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, and Patrice was just trying to tell him, listen, there are cameras in the back, so just yeah. let's go back to the hotel and we talk. So he was just holding him and yeah, say, yeah. Uh, you know, the, you know, it's live. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. going live. Yeah. So it was like, uh, so they were not fighting, and then he throw his whistle, like you know, pressure makes people react in a oh, weird yeah. way. And if you don't know the story, you think they're fighting, but it's like. You know, this will get back to you. <laughs> when you will watch the, the, the video, you yeah. were like, what did I do? And that's exactly what happened in the in the bus. You were like, guys, what I do now? My family is call me, calling me, yeah. you know, yeah. give me an advice. So we, we told him, like, relax, you know, it happens and it's okay. You know, yeah. you can lose it, you know. And uh, people don't understand when you are under pressure, how you can react as a human being. Yeah. You, you learn actually about yourself. So exactly, when yeah. the situation repeats, you get used to it, you handle it. But for some people, it's new. They've never been to that stage. And I think that manager never really been to that stage. In, in 2006, Zidane was the boss. Yeah. You know, with experienced players, so they shared the load and, you know, they really deal with the situation. Mm. I mm. was a young player. They really helped me to handle the pressure. But when you knew in that situation and you don't handle the pressure, then it blows. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know. Yeah, because I've never, it's a great point actually for him. I've never asked you about pressure, John. Yeah. Did you feel pressure? Of course, of course I did. Were, I you, were you the kind of guy that would be sick before the oh, game? Yeah. No, no, not sick, but of course you can feel the, you know, butterflies. You feel, yeah, the butterflies inside you going zzzz. <laughs> <laughs> you need, but at the end of the day, I think that's, I think first, my first early days, I thought, my God, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> like I'm gonna draw. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then, and then I go on the pitch and it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to then settle and then start to, but then the older you get, you know yeah. exactly what it is. You yeah. know experience. what you're feeling. Yeah, exactly. You cannot buy experience. Exactly, no. you can't. You have to go through that yeah. process yeah. and repeat, yeah. repeat. You go through it. You some, it becomes something that's part of you. You you've been doing it for you know for many years, and then when that happens, you 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 still need it. You need those butterflies inside you on a big game on a Tuesday night Champions League game. Uh, and when you retire, you miss that. Exactly, <laughs> you miss it. But then you need that 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 pressure. You need that that nerves you, you 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 need to feel it because then when, once you cross that white line it becomes you and the demons inside yeah. you. how do you get the best out of yourself and play well uh, and help the team first of all help the team and then make sure you play well as well for yourself um and and Stamford Bridge is a, it's a stadium whereby the fans don't you know we the, the fans don't sing too much it's always a bit of, you know, waiting. Yeah. You know, our fans are waiting. You know, what's going to happen here? Oh, he's given a wrong pass. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he's done that. Ooh. You know what I mean? It's not like a Liverpool or... or, or, or Celtic Park. Or, or Celtic yeah, Park, yeah. whereby, you know, when you make a mistake, uh, um, you don't... You don't get the, the, the no. ooh. You don't get <laughs> yeah. that because the singing, the drums just, and just everything. Pass. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but on our stadium, you feel every <laughs> single mistake you make. So it, the pressure becomes even 10 times more. But nah, you 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 grow into it, into this pressure and you and you and you learn how to deal with it better. And that's something I got I, you know, I got used to and I got better at it as well. Were you the same floor and you had those butterflies? Yeah, it's uh, uh, I mean, it's necessary to perform. Yeah. For me, it's necessary to perform. Yeah. The game 
must mean something to you. Yeah. If you go into the game and it means nothing to you, like you will not be the best version of yourself. So I think this is part of the performance. And uh, this explains as well why we were like Chelsea squad stay f for so long together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many years did you play for Chelsea? 11 and a half. That's a testimonial game. Yeah. <laughs> they owe you that game. They do. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. Still, they still they owe do. you that game. They do. Course. They do owe me, but you know, you know that, that would... That would yeah. Yeah. That will never come. That will never come. No. I think, yeah, if, let me I, say, I, I think if Mr. Chelsea doesn't get it, I think no one will get it. I, I would tell them. <laughs> is, is JT still waiting for No, JT hasn't got one. No, I don't think he had one. Frank, no, nobody got one. Yeah. But the, the problem, I think the excuse was that they... Could they, start a campaign here, John. Yeah, they can't do it or they don't want to do it. I think, you know, we played that, that game recently and you, you know, yeah, I know from them, a yeah. business side and sometimes because of the profile is too heavy yeah. for the people running the club. But I believe that the fans would love that. Yeah, of course. The fans would you know, the fans it. would love yeah. that. And and uh, we spoke about it. Like We did, yeah. You guys belong to the history and yeah. I, I see it as an asset and... And it's very rare now. Players staying in one club for, let's say, three years. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not even talking about managers, <laughs> but players actually wanting to stay. You know, it's, it's not that you did not have opportunities. It's, I have, I, I'm good. I want to stay here. I want to win yeah. here. Even if, uh, let's say, we don't win Champions League for so many years, I want to stay here. I'm, you know? And I want to stay here with this group of players. That's why 2012 was so special. Because it was our last opportunity yeah, yeah. together to win this trophy. Yeah, just on that 2012, and we've talked about it a lot. Roberto Di Matteo, of course, you started on the bench. Ryan Bertrand, mm -hmm. he wanted to be a little bit more defensive, I would imagine, down the left-hand side. Did Roberto, when did you find out, Florent, that you were going to be on the no. bench? F first, I was injured. <laughs> So, into it. yeah, yeah. I mean, we had four players injured for that final. Yeah, we had a lot of players injured. Yeah. KT like, suspended. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was a wise decision. Uh, we talked in the morning of the game because I was on the edge of being out of the squad. But this is a Champions League final. Yeah, so I think there was David Luiz, Kyle... Yeah, they were carrying uh, injuries. Yeah, yeah. and Armstrong is not injuries, like something yeah. you play against yeah, Bayern yeah. Munich. So, they didn't play for like two, so, three weeks, I think. So yeah. Roberto asked me, how do I feel? And I told him, I don't have like uh, 90 minutes, especially against those guys. <laughs> we knew that game that it just put the oxygen back on and we would run. We would never touch the ball. So I knew, I and I told him, listen, I think it was the week before I, I enjoyed myself. So I'm like... Can play, but I cannot play 90 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's better that Ryan actually, <laughs> Starts, you yeah. know, what yeah. we call the dirty work. I, say, <laughs> I, I, I cannot. I, those guys will stretch my hamstring <laughs> on the first run. So, so we had this conversation. So I gave him my, you know, if you are selfish, say I want to start, you know. So yeah, yeah. But I'm like, no. I was more about the game plan. I'm, I cannot give you more than this. So I, I didn't have extra time in mind. I'm like. You know, 30 minutes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it would be, because, you know, it's 30 minutes, but the intensity, those guys, they like, they were very, very strong. So, no, I, I think morning or the night before, he told me, how do I feel? And I honestly told him how I felt. So I even told him, you should play Ryan, Ryan because, yeah, you yeah. know, he's fresh, he's got legs and everything. And uh, I, I told him I could come on, depending on the scenario of the game, I would, be ready, you know. If I have to stretch my hamstring, <laughs> don't worry, you know. If it's I have final, to sprint, yeah. and, and, <laughs> but and after that, you have two, 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 yeah, two months know, off. It's a Champions League <laughs> final, but you, you, you cannot, especially against a team like that, be stupid and selfish. No, and that was the the the, the spirit. And David Luiz was in, was even out of the squad. Yeah. Then he asked to to Roberto 
to be part of the squad and he would try and try. So they made a test and he actually played uh, 120 minutes yeah. and, and took the penalty. Yeah. So this is the power of, of the mind. It's like yeah. nothing yeah. made sense if you, if you ask me yeah. the way we want it. But that was our last opportunity. The spirit, I think the spirit. I think yeah. the spirit that day. There was just something. There was just something up in the air that, you know, we could feel that there was something that this 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 will be <laughs> our, you know, because we, you know the penalty miss, uh, uh, you know woodworks and stuff like that, and, and then and then we considered the goal, and then straight away it wasn't up to five minutes. We you know the corner kick we're back at it, and and once Didier scored that goal from the corner kick, I was like, you know what, we, we are not losing this game. What is there it is with no Bayern Munich conceding injury time corners to English teams? They did it to United in 99, <laughs> and they did it to Chelsea <laughs> at, yeah. home. at home. At home. Yeah. But, I mean, you quiet, you, you silenced Bavaria that night. It was, it was. It went there, everywhere went so quiet, silence. <laughs> And then I, I have to say, this is your podcast, but you know me, I, it's not because it's your podcast, <laughs> but you actually played like a boss <laughs> in Munich. Like, no, it was we're my talking best. about pressure. Like, yeah. this guy just, you talk about silencing. Yeah. Because we were running to get the ball back. <laughs> and it was I, was I, I remember because you gave me opportunity to breathe. <laughs> so he was holding the ball and they were trying to get it because yeah. they're very good at counter pressing. And yeah. he was just holding, turning, turning, yeah. turning, switching like they could. And he was so calm, you know, in midfield, like experienced player, like yeah. he, he could play two hours like this. <laughs> you understand? So it was very, very inspiring, like because he was uh, one of the youngest. Yeah, I was, I was 20, 24. Then. Yeah, 24. Yeah, 24. So, and, and like you say, Jetty was not here. So he, he, he like you took over, yeah. like in midfield, he controlled the midfield. Yeah, yeah. And when you see the opposition, like it was like, Great performance. Yeah, I think I, I think also that's probably one game I, I, I'll probably say. It's that, your best. Yeah, it's my best. And it's a game that I think that has brought me, me and Frank. Yeah. Ve closer. Closer. Because closer. Closer. of the respect that the, night. The respect As that you said, night. Yeah. You said to me off air, yeah. you went to the trenches with Frank that yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we yeah went, really. Yeah. yeah, we did. Because we were side by side, you know, we were like side and by side. And it was it, it, yeah. You know, yeah, and it's, it's not very common that, for me, I call it a match winning performance. And you're not in a, you know, usually you talk about the strikers, the score goals, yeah. Yeah. people yeah. remember them. But the way you secured everyone in midfield, it was a match winning performance mm. because you know Bayern Munich like <laughs> were oh, outstanding <yeah. laughs> from left to right you yeah. like they, they, Cruz, you know, Bayern, yeah, 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 non-stop yeah, non-stop yeah. non-stop non-stop so when you are able to keep the ball for more than 5 seconds <laughs> <laughs> to breathe <laughs> yeah to breathe yeah of course you know you, this game we didn't prepare to play we no. prepared to run we were just there <laughs> to run yeah we were we just there to run because obviously we're playing the backyard yeah exactly and we're playing in, in Munich and we we knew they were going to have the ball yeah, we just have to defend and try to counter attack and make sure that when we do get a chance we take it and that's what happened with the corner we didn't have too many chances we didn't create much but then once that corner kick obviously the big man like he always does in big games you know he comes up with, yeah. you know with the header and then we back at it. And then, you know, from there upwards, I remember Frank telling me, this is it now. We're winning this. We are winning this. I think when Didier scored, he said, John Boy, we're winning this. We win it. <laughs> and, you know, it went up to penalties. And we, you know, we, we snatched it. We snatched it. You've said it's your best night in yeah. football. Yeah. yeah. Was it yours for him? Me, no. For me, it's... Uh, in terms of winning the trophy. Yeah, you, winning you, you, the you trophy. Mean, but yeah. how I felt, it was like pain. And like, it, it, like it's a good, very good memory. But the game itself, pain, <laughs> really, pain, like pain, pain, physically, pain, yeah, mentally, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But I was ready for it. But really, there was no pleasure. Is <laughs> you, know, you know, it's different. A game you're trying to win by scoring goals. You know, I see, because I am an offensive. But yeah. it's like this game, I. I am getting ready. I will not touch the ball. I have to run. <laughs> I have to track back. Uh, you know, because those guys, they have possession, but yeah. it's not possession just to keep. They come at yeah. you. 
they come at you. They had these two guys, Ribery and Robin, oh. and they feed them. And those guys, they come, oh they come at God. you and they yeah. shoot. They come yeah. at you. Yeah. So you're like, I have to to help. Uh, uh, it was uh, Ryan. Uh, Ryan yeah. No, um, Ash. Ash. You know. And Ryan in front. So. Um, you know, for an offensive player, it's not like you think, oh, I'm going to beat my defender. It's like, you know, you're not going to go to the other half. Because you're waiting. <laughs> you know, it. mentally it's difficult to yeah. know you're playing a final, but you're not really going to support any attack. You're not there yeah. for, the, for yeah. this. <laughs> so, and look, the way we score, we did have so much opportunities. Yeah. So for me, like tactically or technically, it was painful. But I was believing in that way. I, you know, it was that way we would win, no yeah, other way. Yeah, yeah. And but when you get the reward, you're like, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, this is the, <laughs> that's the feeling to leave the trophy, and you know, and this is the price you have to. So I associate lifting that like prestigious trophy with sacrifice. With, yeah, exactly. So it's like, okay, maybe I didn't sacrifice enough in 2008 because you're like, this is the price yeah, that you have yeah. to pay, but it's worth it. No, mm. it's... So uh, yeah. I, I have to ask them, for what was your best night as a footballer? Um, it's, a, it's a bit strange, but I would say the final is 2006. The I Cup. think, yeah, I was like, my mind was free. And, you know, we played Italy, 10 men, and it was one of my best games with the national team, but we lost. Mm. Um, and after maybe when we played the FA Cup final in, in, in Wembley, because we had the, a good result. Yeah, yeah we had yeah, a good yeah. result. That was a good performance. The, Everton, yeah, the game, Everton. Yeah. Lampard, yeah, too. Lampard, yeah. Yeah. Lampard, so yeah. that was a, a great, because... From the beginning, like even from the other, it was pretty relaxed, yeah, confident. Yeah, they yeah. scored quickly, but yeah, we knew. Yeah, yeah we, we knew, knew that yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and the celebration and everything. Yeah. So yeah, it was a uh, uh, on Wembley, a personal level yeah. and, and, Wembley, and with yeah. the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Wembley oh, was good. always our. Yeah. I think we played so many finals. There. I, I remember. I probably. I'm well, Drogba, I think the first I, Wembley final was against Man United, and yeah. Drogba made yeah. it. Yeah. 1-0, you won that 1-1-0. One, one, you beat Everton 2-1. Was that a community shield you talked about? No, that was FA Cup. The community shield as well, we beat United. I oh, think. You, yeah. you probably yeah. did. Yeah, in that Wembley, yeah, we count. did. I remember that. that it's was only my Josie that gets it. <laughs> yeah, that was my first game, I think, when I when we beat United in the in the yes. community shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you remember that that dance? Became famous in the dressing room? Show Which, me well, the we stance. dance with, with, no, with David Lewis. Yeah, I saw oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Remember? Oh, that was Wembley. It was Wembley, yeah. Yeah, with Jose. Yeah, with Jose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, always a great feeling in, in, in Wembley. Wembley yeah. We've and, always won. Yeah. yeah. I think the if, only one we lost was the semi final against Tottenham. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember which year it was. We, we, we all no, it was the back. final. Of was the it final Carlin or semi final? Cup. Final. Final. final, yeah. yeah final. Yeah, final. We, we came back from Africa Cup of Nations and they, and they were. You know, there, there was because we were all starters. In it was 2008, team. actually. Yeah, with Avram. Yeah, Avram, me, Drogba, Kalu, it was Michael, and, and Michael the book of yeah. tactics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the book of tactics. Tell me more. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we came back from the tournament, and then we and then we Chelsea were in the final. So we were not there. We've been away with the national team for like uh, African Cup of Nations for like a month. So we came back. Obviously, we were all starters then. <laughs> And and the rumors was like, uh, so rumors flying around. We could hear, I could hear, like, are they gonna start? Because you know they they've been away, they haven't played. We've played, we've taken the team to the final. And and but, but we, we I could hear it. I think a couple of I think Drug also had it. And then we talked and then we talked about it. And they were like, okay. I was like, I, I was pretty relaxed about it. Like, okay, if I play, fine. If I don't play, fine. So the manager called us for like, listen, how do you guys feel? Because you guys have been away for like a month. Uh, and how do you feel? Yeah, exactly. How do you feel? Do you feel you're ready to play? Are you tired from the tournament? Uh, what do you think? I mean, it's a final. You don't ask to play if you want to play in the final. And and our answers were my answer, our answers were like, of course, yeah, we I, I think we fit. We we you know we're ready to play. Um, and that was it. 
he made the he made the decision that you know we were gonna play, and he put all three of us, I think me, Drogba, Essien, and the team, and we were awful, <laughs> awful. <laughs> I tell you, awful in that in that game. I think yeah, that was probably that was one of the worst decisions I think, <laughs> and that we. I think I made as well as a player because I never forget that that I, you know, as a player, it's a final. You always want to play. You know what I mean. And I, my my answer then was, yes, I feel good. I want to play. And I was just with Drogba was, we want to play. Uh, but looking back at it, we probably shouldn't have Honestly. made that decision. Honestly, we would have probably said no we're not fit enough or we're pretty tired from the tournament you yeah. know playing african nations you're traveling from here to there um yeah for me that was a strange one and we lost to, we lost to spurs team which you know they, they were beatable then mm. we, we you know we could crush them but i think because of that decision that's why we lost that we lost that 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 and the tactics book yeah. <laughs> and that was <laughs> that was the next team meeting <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, Paul, and tell us about it. <laughs> you know, when you lose, there's always a heavy atmosphere. So you have a team talk in the, I think it's the media room. Yeah. So you know, when you walk in, in Cobham, you walk all the way. Yeah, the hallway. Yeah, yeah all the hallway. And way. then you go into the media and room. And then we sit and we wait. The manager <laughs> comes with his bag. And you know, managers, they always have skits, you know, they have to make something new. And yeah. so he needs to, to, to talk about something. So he comes, come, takes the book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, start to take you know from a suitcase. Yeah. Start, start to take out some books. books you, know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then he starts saying, uh, "I think he had the CD." You know, and he throw, you know, he said, "Oh, we could, uh, you know, analyze the game and talk about tactics." tactics. You know, I have the. If you want to think about tactics, <laughs> have you know the tactic books. You know, and he put he it. Slap it on yeah, the he slapped yeah. it there, and uh, he throw the CD on the wall. You know, it's like you have to make us react like yeah. that. <laughs> so we are watching and you know you know the guys the you know the there's a very sharp eye yeah, you know, the, you know. <laughs> so i'm like oh wow you know i can speak about tactics but no i, but I no, don't, I don't do speak. but no i don't speak about tactics <laughs> because we're he like, doesn't know how to speak yeah about tactics. so we're like this he's hiding something you know so then the meeting finish and then there's one guy say Guys, did you see the tactic book? <laughs> He's like, it was a new book from the store. <laughs> it was a there was Chelsea. nothing in it. Yeah, there was no. <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, uh, managing is an art. <laughs> you know, you have to trick your players yeah. like into tactics. But I, I don't want to talk about tactics. But I could speak for hours about tactics. <laughs> but I won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you have someone, you know, in the in the first row, like. Listen, wait a minute, that book is <laughs> new. <laughs> it's new book. Yeah, it's not even a book, it's a notepad <laughs> from the Chelsea store. <laughs> so then you're like, oh, okay, okay, got us there. Okay. Abraham, oh <laughs> yeah. my God. Let's not speak about tactics. <laughs> Let's Abraham. not talk about yeah. tactics. Yes. I remember that day, I remember that day really yeah. well. Uh, because I used, to, I used to sit at the back of the, <laughs> the media room. <laughs> in the meeting, I used to sit at the back. So you have the guys who sit at the back. You have the ones sitting in the front, obviously the JTs, the the, the Lampard, the Ashley Cole. You know they see it, and a couple of other guys, the younger guys, they see in the front. Then you have uh, <laughs> in the middle. You have probably have you know the Africans. Then you have the, the other guys. Then from the jokers the rest at of the, the back. Wall, yeah. you know, we had we the Portuguese. <laughs> Portuguese on the side. So it was all scattered around and. And then once all this uh, drama starts yeah. to happen, everybody starts to like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you see someone pinching each other. It's like, what's going on here? So yeah. when the tactics Managing thing happened, easy, yeah. really. no. <laughs> so when the tactics thing happened, you threw the book and everyone was like, hold on a minute. <laughs> that looked like a book from the Chelsea store. <laughs> There's nothing in it. <laughs> it's not so a tactics good. book. He was just trying to get into our head. But, but he failed. But he failed. Obviously, he doesn't even know how to talk about tactics. And he's like, hey, I can talk about tactics here for hours. 
but I'm not going to talk about tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on that then, because it's fascinating, and I always think the best managers are able to do this, the best at getting in your head and producing it, it Jose, was Josie. Josie, Josie, Josie. I mean, Josie comes met. in, he's, he, he will go direct, he'll smash everybody. He comes in, before he comes in, he has everybody, who whoever is going to attack, he have you in his mind. He will start, first of all, going on, you know, yeah, what happened yesterday, blah, blah, blah. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable, you know. He's still, he, he's, he's waiting. Yeah. It's not acceptable, you know. <laughs> you because, know there's a because, transition you coming. Know, <laughs> yeah, you know something is coming. <laughs> you know, it's not acceptable. You know, you can think, uh, you know, you can just come and just walk around or on the pitch. Uh, you don't start the game. You are angry. Hey, don't be angry here. You can't be angry here. I tell you this, you cannot be angry here you know your name is coming. You can't be angry here. And then he goes direct. And you, <laughs> and, and you, and he goes direct. In so, front of the group. In front of the group. And he goes, he goes at you. He goes and you, at you don't come and buy a house in my place. <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do with the game. And you, why you come to my, my house? Yeah, he told to Michael Ballack. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, you... <laughs> Michael bought a house close by. Michael Ballack. Yeah, we were, we were playing against our Watford. <laughs> Watford, yeah, Watford. We were losing, I think, first half, yeah, one nil or two nil. And then we came into the dressing room. So he went at Makalele. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there. The guy told me yeah, that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Makalele and Balak. Ooh. He went in on that. <laughs> you know, Makalele, whenever he goes to Makalele, like, now nah, that Makalele starts speaking French and throwing his stuff everywhere. And then he went on Michael Balak. He said, he went, he started, after he killed Makalele, it's like, and you, and you, yeah, you, you, yes, you, yes, you, Michael Balak. Don't come to my place in Portugal to buy a house. <laughs> Don't come to my place to buy a house. Buy a house somewhere else. Buy a house somewhere. Yes, yes, buy a house somewhere else. Now play football. Play, yeah. play football. Ah, oh, he went into him and, you know, ba Bali, Balak being Balak. And he was just there sobering, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he just passed his message across. Just a genius. Yeah, a genius. And then we went back. We won the game. Yeah. We went back in the second half, we won the game. It had a, an impact. Yeah. Me, what I witnessed was the tap on the shoulder, <laughs> and then he goes <laughs> on, the, on the board and <laughs> change your name. It's like, <laughs> this one is very hard. It yeah. just, it, it doesn't talk to you. <laughs> it just, <laughs> yeah. Tap on the shoulder. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you know, when, it, you know, it, it, I think it shoulder. was gone in uh, September, so I, yeah. I, I, I didn't really work with him for a long time. But from what I saw, it was like, like you yeah. said, straightforward. There's no, no way around. Is no. If you're not performing, he likes you. But if you're not performing, tap yeah. on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> like, if he comes close to you in the dressing room, you know. You so, know you're yeah, out. Yeah, you know you're out. <laughs> you know you're out. So I, I so, like, tap on the shoulder. Like it doesn't, you know, he's not mad at you or what. The decision he took his decision already. Yeah. He goes on the board, your name, <laughs> cross, and he, he writes somebody else. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> no emotions, no no hard feelings. Yeah, because in the second half, enough. in the second half, everybody's looking. If we're losing, you're looking. Where's he walking to? If he was walking close to you, like, oh my god, I'm out. So he just and comes. he was. Yeah. He, he would make changes. Yeah, he was yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. first managers that would think nothing of, or 1-0 down, it could even be 0-0. No, no, you and you, no. you're off. Yeah, you're off. Two new boys you're off. off. You're off. He comes, tap you on the shoulder, like Flo says, and bring out the tactics board, and then your name is out. Name that's, is out. Yeah. That's juicy. Yeah. And, then, and then if we lose the game, the next day is where he is going to go at you. He doesn't really go at you that much in the dressing room because he needs to get the team ready for the second yeah. half. But then if we if he carries on and we lose the game, and then the 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 the, the, the next game uh, the next day where we do the the video analysis, that's where he comes at you. Comes at you massive, big, big. Can you talk back to him? No. A few players did does, but. Uh, but also Jose is also very clever with 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 Fun the way, waging. yeah, with the managing and. Um, but I also think what he was saying was right. So even if you don't you accept know, it, exactly, you, you yeah. know that yeah. what he's saying, you yeah. already you know. know you already have but a bad maybe game, you're not yeah. used someone telling you that way. Yeah. But what he's saying is not like 
Was he always honest? There's no sugar coat in it. No, no, no. no, he no, was no. Honest. He, he give it to you straight. Yeah. No, no. There's, there's and you no. Had to be whoever that. you are, yeah, <laughs> whoever, whoever you are, you are. Like, and you had to be a man to accept you that. Had and to I think it. you know that's a part of the problem. And we've talked about it on this podcast, Florent. What do you make of young players today? Because from from my position and speaking to people in the game, they're softer. It's a new world that we live in. But, you know, that's the challenge now that the managers are facing. You have to find a way to communicate. What we're talking about, you know, we're talking like old dinosaurs yeah, back in the days and everything. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, that I don't think that was easy for the managers as well. Now you have to know how to engage, which is more difficult because they have, like I said, the environment is totally different. They have more people around them and they are a brand. Yeah. You know, so they're not really trying to fit into the team, into the club's project. I am a brand. I am here for a short period. So you have to adjust. But I don't think it's more difficult. It's more like the codes are different. And there's also a shift of generation. For yeah. example, yeah. Uh, if you have older players and y like young players, is you know, it's difficult to, to match uh, in mm. terms of energy. Yeah. But softer... I think they are kind of cold blooded, you know. This generation, the, you know, the, um, if I take the example for of France, what they are achieving at a young age, they are cold blooded. They <laughs> come to take your your place, you know. They have no feelings like I should mm. I should wait. Mm. So I don't think they are soft. It's more how they react to failure. Yeah. Mm. What we say, there's a lot of situation, even if you're a good player, when you're not performing, someone comes and tells you, you react in a way where you are challenging. You say, okay, I would prove something. Now it's like, you told me in a way I don't like, so I don't want you to speak to me. Yeah, I think one of the things I don't like with the current generation though, um, I remember back in the day, obviously, we didn't have too much of social media. And like you said, I think now when you look at the, the players now, it's, it's like everybody's so focused on trying to create a brand. Yeah. Everybody wants to yeah, become the a profile. brand. profile. Absolutely. You know, and, 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 and it just takes away the beauty of the game. It takes, I, I, you know, I can understand everybody's trying to evolve. You know, we were trying to evolve. Uh, uh, it's what the brands want. Uh, you the get fans big, the fans it. want, you know, you get Part bigger deals, point. you get this, you get that, you become this brand. But it just changes the way we see the game, the way the game is played, the way that we see the game. Uh, because remember back then, when we have bad games or when we've been criticized by our managers, by our coaches, we go back home, probably have a conversation with, with who? With your missus or your parents or your brothers or your sister. You know, this is what it is. And then you guys talk about it and, and it finishes there. It's, you know, it ends there. Yeah. And probably the advice is go back to, to training and try to improve and get better. Of course. We don't cry. We don't come out on social media and cry because now this this platform is there, and you see players always coming out to 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 voice out yeah. their frustration yeah, but on social media. My, my where, opinion is is for, excuse me is yeah to to become uh, let's say known and 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 high profile in football. You had to win trophies. Where now we talked about it. You are potentially a good player. Yeah. So that for me, that's the difference with the social media, which it is a tool. You can create a profile before you've made it. You've made it, you've made yeah. it. in terms of performances, and trophies, trophies and, or whatever. Yeah, absolutely yeah. Right. So for me, it's like you can pretend, but you you are not really at this level. And then when you are exposed, you react differently. Yeah. When, for example, for us, um, I feel like a whole guy, but <laughs> it's like, for example, a striker, uh, he had to be the best, uh, the top uh, striker of the league to be able to pretend I am at this level. Now, Potentially, I told you about the data. With the data, we think, oh, this player was playing good, so he could score yeah. 50 goals and, and this. So we give him a value before he actually had the experience and proved yeah. uh, on the yeah. pitch. And for yeah. me, that's the main difference because when the whole environment is telling you you're good, you're already good. You don't yeah. have to, like you say, 
prove it. You don't have to prove yeah. it. I yeah, am good. Yeah. Everybody Fuck knows I'm good. I mean, I made the point to Vaughn earlier. 2007, Liga 1 Player of the Year, only £13 million. Pounds. That's what Chelsea paid yeah. for you. The best player in France, yeah. 2006 7 yeah. season, 13 and, million quid. And, and yeah. for me yeah. to 13, sign, yeah. and for me yeah. to sign to Chelsea, Robin had to go to Madrid. Madrid. Yeah, that's right. So even as a top player in French league, I was not guaranteed to be able to sign to Chelsea. You understand? Because so, we had yeah. to get rid of exactly Robin, yeah. Yeah. when, yeah. for example, Chelsea Chelsea just signed some, a young player from Lyon, uh, Malo Gusto. You know, he just had maybe half a season That's in Lyon and he's already, you know, so... 30 million. Ex exactly. So this is why now it's difficult to blame on the player because the system now is set in a way where, uh, you know, it's... Yeah, yeah, it's not that... Yeah, it's, uh, it's not like I'm blaming the, the younger generation, but I just feel like, you know, they also contributing to the whole thing because a young player now is so focused on on trying to create, a, become a yeah, brand. brand. And for me, that's where I, I, that's my problem. I know, yes, the, the, the environment, the game has become that way. But as a young player, you know, we, we talked yesterday with Victor Sime, you know, yesterday, you know, he, he had a massive, massive offer from Saudi Arabia. Mm. But if you look at it today, with the way the world is going, with the way that the environment is, he could just easily take that money. Yeah, yeah. He didn't. This is where this is where the mentality. This is the mentality. Hmm. He's chosen. You know what? I am gonna sit in Napoli, or stay there for another one more. Uh, finish this season, and next season, I want to go to a bigger club in Europe where I can potentially win the Champions League. Yeah. He just finished eight in the you know in the Ballon d'Or. Why can't he think? In a couple of years, from eight, I might get to maybe second. So he can wait. You know, or, or yeah. something like that. And that's the mentality that's, that I think, you know, we should have, you know, coming to this younger yeah, generation. I, no, I agree with, with way, you. With the way they feel. And the explanation is about his background. You know his story of Victor. How he get to Napoli, how difficult it, it was. was yeah. All those steps. Yeah. It's not like yeah, I know. overnight. Yeah. He but reached there and then, yeah. then he want to yeah, jump again. But that's even the more reason why I think he should have taken, because if he's taken this offer, he's, he's set for life. He's set for life. The grandkids, the, the great children, grandkids. Whatever it is, will never work in their life. So, but he's decided, you know what? I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to do that just now. For, for me, that's a sign of confidence. Yes. I, an, yeah. I know if today I get this, if... I perform the way I know I can perform, yeah. I can get better. Mbappé is the same. I know what I can do. Yeah. I am young and I believe in myself. Some players are not that confident. They're like, if I don't take it now, it will be gone. <laughs> yeah. You understand? And now from what I understand with the, you have different uh, stream of income. It's not only the salary. Yeah. That's why so many Players want to be a brand to have sponsorship outside mm -hmm. of. So I don't depend on if the club is performing or, or, or not. I do my own stuff. I use football as a way. And that's it. You understand? There's so that's why for me, the profile of Vito is I like football. I like football. Anyway, I like football. So I will work on being a better footballer. And in my mind, that's the way I see. I don't know him personally. But yeah. He have in mind where he wants to go. Strong, yeah, very strong mentality. Strong. Very strong mentality. So, and he talks a strong mentality. I'm conscious of time. This yeah, has almost been a two-hour podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Florent, you live in Dubai. You're welcome <laughs> anytime, my friend. You can come back for part two. I have to ask before we let you go. This current Chelsea yeah. side, this current Chelsea football club, do you recognise it? Uh, except the color of the shirt, <laughs> I would say <laughs> no, no, not not really. I think um, you know. I, I told you. I think uh, right now the club is using too many keywords, you know, about the project or whatever, and it takes time to build any things of value. And for me, I don't since the new ownership. Uh, I don't see, I don't really see a stability from the management. 
So I, I don't want to speak about the players mm -hmm. that they choose. They have their own process. But from the management, there is no stability, no clarity yet. So as a, as a Chelsea fan, I am a Chelsea fan, it's difficult for me to identify to what I see. Yeah. You know, and it's not been harsh on them. Is yeah. I don't understand. You know, and I'm very independent. I, you know, I like when they win. It hurts me when we lose because yeah. people have fun of us. So, yeah, yeah. But really, I don't, I don't understand. So, if I don't understand, and the most important, I don't think the players understand. They repeat something and say, "Oh, we came here for the project. We are here for the project." But the way it's going. I wonder if there is a project. Yeah. This is my opinion. What is the project? Yeah. 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 And how? If yeah. this is the project, how you realize the project? Yeah. Because you know, you everybody will tell you, we want to win. We want to win trophies. Okay. Then now explain to us how. And this is where, you know, people will <laughs> run away. But, yeah. but you like Poch. I know John likes Poch. Do you like Mauricio Pochettino? Yeah. You know, he's a. You don't have so many options, and he's a talented manager, uh, like uh, Graham Potter was. But Go on, Graham. but <laughs> Go the on, thing Graham. is, the thing is, we talked about it. Even in successful time, renowned manager, they were kicked out. Yeah. Even when you win, you are kicked out. So, talking about project the, in Chelsea, there is no time to build the project you must win now you know and yeah during our time people was like, boring chelsea boring chelsea but boring but winning yeah. <laughs> Successful. you know and then maybe we you know you remember when you <laughs> then we win after yeah three four goals we were still boring maybe <laughs> but with the confidence yeah of winning games then you can try fancy stuff but yeah. not so much because our style was <laughs> yeah, you know uh, yeah. team team uh, meetings was uh, guys let's back to the basics yeah <laughs> you know? the basics. exactly so to it's like you want when i hear this about project you want to trick me chelsea is about winning so and i think Pochettino knows it very well. If he doesn't win, they will kick him out. That's, course, the, that's yeah. the rule. So, so we're always trying to back up and we're looking for stability because it's necessary to perform. But if you don't win games and people will look at the money spent, this is basic in, in the UK. Yeah. How much yeah. you spent? Okay, uh, where did you finish in the league? It's not good enough. Yeah, almost a billion, yeah. Yeah, it's meant over a billion. So we over have to be billion. honest. You know what they're missing, John? They're missing a, a few Florent Maludas. I want to yeah, finish yeah. up. We're going to embarrass him. How good was he as a teammate? Oh, he was good. He was good. He was. Good. I mean, uh, when Flo was when Flo was at it, you know, he was you know he was good, uh, powerful, strong, you know, um, clever as well when it comes to the way he played. Um, I think first when he came, he was he, he, you know he was a bit. You know, he didn't know where, how, how to fit in the team. You know, it took him a bit of time. But then you could see when it, once he, once he settled in the team, you could see he started playing with a, with a, with swagger. a, with a swagger. Yeah. I think, oh, oh, I think that, 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 that 2010 as well was, was where I thought, I think he played, you know, he played one of his best, best season. I think it was under Carlo, yeah. Carlo, uh, yeah, Angelotti. Yeah. Um, and then he started to, to mix his game with power, strength, a little bit of cleverness. And you can see when he was confident, you can see it was just flowing. And, you know, uh, and I just, just a great guy, a uh, great teammate, great person, um, you know, uh, one that never, he didn't speak much as well, um, you know, but was always there, was always there. He was a presence, you know, also in the And I can room. tell he was yeah. a winner as well, which means, Florent, you got the final question. Who won the boxing fight, you or John? <laughs> <laughs> I think we were on the floor at some point. <laughs> yeah, no. Because they dragged both no, on the floor. <laughs> what happened, we, we didn't really uh, had the opportunity to fight because everybody came in. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, apart from John, I was trying to reach. We yeah. were trying to reach. 
<laughs> but I mean, DJ Kevin, a lot of them can be yeah. in between yeah. us. So, no, they were, uh, fortunately, <laughs> oh, we, get, we didn't get to box, box each other. They're still friends. Maybe we can arrange that for charity. Maybe we can sort it Saudi. Out. Let's go to yeah, Saudi. 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 <laughs> we had season. I'll, I'll take the money. I'll, yeah. take, I'll be the promoter. <laughs> you guys can fight in Saudi. But listen, Florin, in all seriousness, it's been two hours of gold. You have been yeah. fantastic. You've been honest. That smile of yours, that laugh. You're welcome back, John. He's welcome he's back. He's welcome here, back. Right? He's welcome back. Yeah, definitely. You, you're a Dubai definitely. resident. If you're ever bored, come on down and see us again. But thank you so much for being on the podcast. You're welcome. I had a, I had a great time. <laughs> Florent Maluda, what a legend. Episode four of the OB1 podcast made possible by Bet Winner, of course. And we'll be back next week to do yeah. it all over again with another legend. Winning has always been my driving force. Growing up, I dreamt of playing for the Nigerian national team. My passion led me there. The support and unity of players and Nigerian fans led us to the final. Together, we won the African Cup of Nations. The moments that will forever be carved in my heart. Join the winning team with Betwinner.